Hi, everyone. Thank you um, so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the Upskills Consortium to share a few words on what our project is and what its aims um, and um, different parts are. Um, so to begin with, Upskills, as you probably uh, would have guessed from the invitation, is uh, a strategic partnership consortium um, that has been funded through the Erasmus Plus uh, funding scheme of the European Commission, uh, and it consists of actually eight partners. Uh, I'm representing the University of Malta, who's coordinating the project, but we also have uh, amongst our consortium with the University of Belgrade, the University of Bologna, Clary and Eric, uh, who are organizing this event as well, the University of Graz and the University of Rijeka. And at the same time, even though they didn't receive Erasmus Plus funding, but uh, affiliate funding from uh, the Swiss uh, sort of uh, equivalent of Erasmus Plus, Movetia. We also have University of Geneva and the University of uh, Zurich, um, who are basically equal partners uh, in this. It's just the funding stream that um, uh, that is different here. So uh, our main aim uh, when it comes to uh, to our project is uh, that we want to uh, tackle certain gaps and mismatches in the skills that students of language uh, related disciplines um, are required to have in order to create a better workforce. Uh, and the rationale behind this uh, is that um, there is a strong need, and actually this was corroborated by our needs analysis as well, for graduates of linguistics and language related skills in both um, research jobs, uh, so more academic oriented, but also in industry jobs. Um, and uh, the problem that we've identified, we had identified and actually our needs analysis confirmed, is that these students sometimes um, lack um, skills like critical thinking and problem solving when it comes to uh, them applying ideas outside of the comfort zone. And by comfort zone here, I mean the, um, the sort of topics that they have already dealt with in their undergraduate or postgraduate uh, studies. Um, then uh, there is also a gap in uh, how to design research and analyze data when it comes to topics that are related to, but not specifically on um, their own uh, um, research interests when they were undergraduate students or graduate students. Uh, there is also um, a dire need for uh, people with more project management skills uh, uh, who can join uh, the industry. Uh, and finally, um, there is a pronounced lack of digital skills, according to a needs analysis um, as well, when it comes to graduates of more traditional linguistics or language-related um, courses. And our aim is basically to try and solve um, this, well, to, 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 to sort of point towards a direction in which um, uh, this mismatch could be um, solved uh, in a way. And the way in which we're doing this is by um, basically producing, um, I would say, um, uh, some, well, yeah, we're producing uh, a number of materials across a number of um, uh, learning areas um, uh, by um, uh, using uh, the uh, techniques of modular and blended learning. Uh, we are trying to implement innovative pedagogies that will keep the interest of the students at a higher level, uh, such as educational uh, games that are online. Uh, and we also have a strong fo focus on active learning and helping students to learn through real world applications. Uh, so uh, we have a very strong focus on learning that is based on tasks or research that students have to complete. Um, and finally, we also want, and uh, this is where uh, Clarin is so important for us. Uh, we want to also integrate research infrastructures and uh, think about ways of integrating uh, existing research that is being carried out in both universities and the industry into teaching. Uh, so as part of this, apart from the needs analysis, which has now been conclu concluded and you will hear a bit more about, I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of the remaining 
uh, aspects of, of upskills that we're currently working on. First off, uh, we have research-based teaching, which is uh, obviously you know the, the focus of, of today's multiplier event. Uh, and um, I'm pretty sure that some of you will have signed up to receive some guidelines, um, uh, but we have draft guidelines that are available now uh, for people to check and, and, and provide feedback uh, to. Um, our focus when it comes to research-based teaching is uh, on uh, how to involve students as active participants in the process of research rather than as an audience uh, listening, the, listening to the results of research. Uh, and our focus in order to um, uh, to attain this goal is to, um, to well, we, we have been looking in parallel at ways in which uh, the lecturers on ongoing research can be included in into ongoing teaching ways in which we can try and include in collaboration with uh, our uh, very esteemed associate partners who belong to the industry uh, research that is industry based into um, uh, university teaching with a focus on undergraduate studies uh, and uh, also we want to guide students uh, who seek to pursue their own research agenda by giving them tailor-made um, uh, you know guidance uh, across the uh, along the, the this process uh, another strategy of our research-based teaching agenda has to do uh, with how we can start using, or well, we can continue and capitalize on using existing research infrastructures in research-based uh, teaching because um, uh, there is a general tendency to sort of try and get new data all the time when there are all these like amazing stuff out there that people can use um, and adapt to their needs. Um, on the when it comes to our uh, next goal, uh, we want to we have developed we want to develop and and um, publicize uh, a set of uh, uh, learning content materials that belongs to different learning content blocks. I'm really happy to announce that the materials will start becoming available beginning of December, um, and probably you know soon after that you will have the full we will have the full blown materials uh, ready for uh, piloting and and for you know. For, for consultation with the public. Uh, the areas that we're focusing on, um, there are some more general areas and there are, then so there are some more um, um, field specific ones. So uh, we have a general, uh, we have materials for introduction, for introducing scientific research in general, as well as for conducting research uh, that in, in involves a lot of analytical thinking and problem solving. Uh, then we have a focus, obviously, uh, in linguistic uh, theory, um, where there is a strong focus on typology and how this could be uh, taught in a, in a more interactive way, um, where the students take charge of their learning. Uh, then we have project management skills, which, uh, as we've seen, was in one important um, thing that came out of our needs analysis. Uh, and then moving on to some more language-related topics, uh, we are covering uh, text processing. We'll be producing materials for text processing, speech processing, uh, as well as collecting data from human subjects. Um, then on the more technical side of things, we, um, we have prepared materials for um, programming. Uh, machine learning with a focus on, on language data, obviously, given the scope of our project, uh, as well as language data science, uh, where we are including inferential statistics for the study of, uh, of language. Uh, and finally, at least, but of course, uh, the last, but of course, not least of all, uh, we have uh, uh, materials on how to use uh, repositories uh, and uh, existing infrastructures like Clarins One uh, and, uh, uh, and then trying to, uh, you know, to give our students a better impression of what standards they need to use uh, in this regard. Um, then finally, our focus on games and gamification is very pronounced in, in, in the actual project. Uh, and this is coming soon. Um, so the rationale behind going for uh, a more games-oriented approach is that traditional lecturing has a structure that is, and it is usually delivered, has a, a modular-based structure, but it is usually delivered in big, ugly, rather than unpleasant lumps that present a limited picture of student progress. Um, uh, in contrast to what we are uh, trying to, um, to showcase and how we're trying to develop our materials is by including educational games, because they are able to provide unique cognitive stimulation and motivation. Uh, I think we can all agree that 
people uh, who try to learn by playing games uh, are likely to have a bit more interest um, uh, into their learning experience uh, and then provide also opportunities to continuously and automatically assess the learner's uh, ability in a more fun way than a traditional examination or assessment or whatnot. Uh, so our plan with regards to this and what we're working on is on adapting existing educational games to fit our goals. Obviously, this is a very labor intensive process, uh, but we have a couple of games that we will um, be using uh, in our uh, learning content and people obviously can pick and choose whether they want to use games or not in their own uh, teaching if they use our content. We also want to implement and include in our teaching free of the shelf games. Uh, that exist on the market and are uh, relevant to our uh, particular um, uh, blocks. Uh, and also we want to try and gamify our learning content wherever it, this is possible. And this we're doing basically by um, uh, placing uh, everything that has to do with our learning content on Moodle, which offers some uh, innate capabilities for gamification. So uh, just to you know to, to to sum up a bit what exactly we're doing and 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 when things are happening and whatnot, um, we have the following uh, intellectual outputs that we need to deliver as part of our project. First, we have the needs analysis, which has already been concluded. Then we have the guidelines on research-based teaching and using infrastructures in research. And this is our focus today, our main focus today, even though you're going to hear about everything else too. Uh, then we have to consolidate existing and create new learning um, content. And finally, to implement our plan about including educational games for active learning in our learning content. Uh, now, tied to these goals that we have and the, 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 the several deliverables we're going to produce, uh, we have multiplier events. Uh, you're currently at the third one. Um, uh, and each mul and multiplier events are planned for each intellectual output. So um, we, have, uh, we have completed one in Bologna and one in Graz. The first one was on the needs analysis. The second one was on the learning content creation. Currently, you're um you're you're participating in the third um multiplier event in Utrecht and there will be a fourth one in Malta uh, sometime around February or March where we're going to be uh discussing um educational games and presenting our uh, work on this uh and at the same time our our Partners uh, uh, from Switzerland, the University of Geneva and the University of Zurich uh, are also planning. One has already taken place in, in um, uh, um, from the University of Zurich, but they're planning their own dedicated uh, events, multiplier events too. Uh, and the culmination of all this process um, and the piloting and, and all that is going to be a summer school that we are planning to hold in Serbia in July 2023, where we're going to be bringing in together both trainers from partner, partner institutions to act as, as teachers and um, a number of students, again, from partner institutions who will be um, taking part in some uh, learning using the upskills uh, curricula. Uh, content, basically, not curriculum. Uh, so uh, the results that we expect to get out of this and what our aims are in terms of, you know, what we want to achieve uh, by engaging in this type of uh, um, uh, research is we want to be in a position or at least help a bit better prepare students for the reality of the job market, which is not just to learn a theory and apply it uh, in vacuum, but uh, apply it in very specific context and settings. We also want to sensitize academics, and I think that the main platform for this are these multiplier events um, uh, uh, as well, uh, with respect to what skills employers are looking for rather than... Um, um, so, yeah, basically, you know, we always need to be mindful of, of, of the fact that our students are going to join the workforce at one point or another. So we need to also prepare them for this uh, as well uh, with our teaching. And it's my understanding that uh, uh, several academics of a more traditional orientation um, don't really uh, take this uh, into account enough. Uh, then we want to raise awareness among employers as well, and this is actually really important, that uh, about the skills and aptitude of graduates of linguistics and language related degrees, uh, specifically in areas like natural language processing or automatic translation or whatnot, uh, there is a tendency at some point uh, in some in some, okay, or some occasions 
to try and get students who don't necessarily have a linguistics background or a language related background, uh, but only a computer science degree or whatnot. Uh, and it is important also for employers to understand and realize that, you know, the, the linguistics graduates and language uh, related um, courses graduates are uh, equally important for uh, these jobs. Um, and there is awareness. I'm not saying there isn't, but yeah. Uh, then we want to create engaging modular learning content that will be freely accessible to everyone. And part of, uh, I think the main aim of this is to ensure that uh, we get as much uptake of the learning content and used by people uh, as possible. And finally, we want to promote active or active task and research-based learning rather than um, uh, traditional uh, lecturing. Uh, so quite some exciting things to come, but let's focus now on, on, on the second uh, intellectual output. More or less, I would like to thank everyone for joining. And I would also like to remind you to sign up for our newsletter if you go to our website, which has been shared with you um, uh, in the invitation to this event. Uh, at the bottom uh, side of the page, you will be able to sign up for a newsletter. We've just started like uh, sending bi-monthly uh, newsletters to, uh, to interested parties. And this will include information about when you could potentially pilot or try out our, um, our, um, our materials. Then I would also like to invite you to follow us on Facebook and on uh, Twitter. And don't forget to use the hashtags UpskillsME3 uh, in order to discuss this event uh, and provide us feedback as well. Um, that is all for me. Thank you very much uh, for being with us today. I'm looking forward to an exciting day of discussions.